Good morning, friends. I'm going to keep it really real. I just spent my first night in this wilderness area, in the San Luis wilderness area. It was a tough, tough night. Because I stayed in the thermal baths longer than I anticipated, talking to the lovely people that were at the thermal baths. So I was racing here last night in my van to make it before dark because it's it's a wilderness area. So you want to not be trying to get your camp set up in the dark. And as I was driving here quickly, I was the only car on the road coming this direction. All the other cars are going the other direction. And I got like a strange feeling about it. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly why I was feeling the way I was feeling. But I do know that in the distance, one could see lightning over the sand dunes. I make it to my campsite in the nick of time. And I realize uh, that I can't make it back to the spot that I had set up for myself. Like I found a spot that other campers weren't at and... You know, like it was a spot I felt comfortable with and I can't find it because it's dark and I'm nervous. You know, I just have this like strange, nervous feeling. Now, all the RV videos I've ever seen say, if you are going to be camping or boondocking someplace, follow your intuition, follow your gut. Don't stay in a place that feels unsafe, if you, even if you don't have a reason to think it's unsafe. But... I'm like, well, I'm already here. I've already driven all this way from the swimming site. It's like two minutes to 9 p.m. There is barely, barely any light outside. Like I need to buckle down, right? So I uh, I feel some relief when I find a spot that has other RVers because I'm like, okay, these people are out here. So that means they're not afraid of lightning. Like other RVers are a good sign. And I'm not totally in the wilderness by myself. I'd be around these people so i decide to just even though i can't find my spot pull in where these other rvers are <sighs> goodness gracious i tried to pull into a spot and i couldn't get in because of the way it was it was just a weird i i know i ran over two or three shoves Actually, let's go outside right now and see what shoves i ran over i gotta find my other shoe i mean when i finally got into the spot i jumped out the car I plugged my stuff in real quick and I jumped back in and then jumping back in I lost a shoe because I was afraid that someone would know I was in my van and come and get I I had a bad feeling that there was an axe murderer out here I really did which is crazy because everybody I've met out here has been so nice and I know that was my imagination playing me for a fool that's how come I didn't sleep well that's like I don't have a shoe. That's why I was sleeping with an ax literally underneath my bed. That's why I slept with the kitchen knife underneath my pillow. And that's why I slept with this at the driver's seat. I did all of that because I was worried about protecting myself in case the ax murderer King, axe murderer, king. In an effort to protect myself from this alleged or hypothetical axe murderer, I felt like it was critical to make sure that 100% of my windows were covered so that absolutely no light got out whatsoever. Because I figured, like, the only way the axe murderer would know to come to, you know, my van is if he saw the light in the distance coming, skeeping out of my window. So let me tell you what I did. You know, I have these curtains here, which are pretty decent. They let in this little bitty light, but I could safety pin them. I think my mom did that. Thanks, mom, for that safety pin. It came in handy last night. But, you know, for the most part, the edges are good. But what about the back window? Man, even though the back window technically closed, it didn't close well enough for me, so I hung up some clothing. You see this? And then I tried to barricade the back door with this metal bar. It was wedged up in here because I was like, if he's coming through the back, I'm going to have to hear him first. I'll have enough time to grab my axe. I was like, no light, nothing. 
put everything I can up to cover every single crack in the window I can possibly. That's how I was legitimately feeling. I did not, I didn't think I was stripping. I thought I was protecting myself. And I kept saying like, just leave, just leave the campsite, go someplace. But then I didn't know where to go. Like, I guess I could have gone back to the place that, um, I had come from, but then I'd pay, I'd have to pay money. And I also like in the back of my head, I was like, maybe you're just tripping, but I wasn't tripping enough to stop <laughs> so i kept on all right now let's find my shoe and tell you the rest of the story I found my shoe it is uh right there let me show you exactly what i did last night i oh ah, i sat on the axe gosh darn it these things are sharp so i ran outside and i plugged this into the box and then got back in the car well, you might be wondering, why is this here then if I did that, if I plugged it in and it should be outside? Well, because that lightning turned into a storm, a bad storm. Lightning, ding, 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 everywhere. Ding, ding, thunder, vroom, 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 everywhere. That's not how thunder sounds. That's not how lightning sounds, but you get my point. It was loud. It was scary. Rain, you know, on the top of the... It was like, a, I was in a storm. And so I was like, oh man, I wonder if being connected to the air, con I mean, to the outlet in with an exposed cord and the whole thing about RV protection during lightning storms that I saw from all of these blogs is that you want to unplug from shore power. That's what they call it, shore power. Because if there is a lightning strike anywhere on the campsite, all the shore power units are likely connected and then you could short circuit everything in your van. So, you know, even if you're not struck by lightning, if lightning strikes anywhere on the campsite, then you are at risk. So you should, that's like tip number one, unplug from shore power. Well, I was plugged into the shore power. I was like, uh, man, my stuff is out there. Oh, is it worse to get killed by the mass murderer or worse to be electrocuted that's literally what i was thinking and so i was like well it's pretty unlikely that the mass murderer is actually out in the rain and if he is i still have my handy dandy washa and washa so he'd have to be the kind of axe murderer that kills in the rain and then have to be the kind of axe murderer that is willing to fight. This is what I did. Let me show you. In the van, seat, the front seat, pulling, 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 pulling the cord. Then I shut the door and I leap back here like a fool and my bed was made. So I leap. Oh, trying to avoid the axe murderer. I was being really stupid. I was so scared that I was being that stupid. And that's how one flip-flop ended up there, one flip-flop ended back here. I don't know where anything else is. I was too afraid to cook. So I didn't. I, I was just eating hard cheese and... Uh, uncooked sausage I, it was a mess last night was a mess so let's go outside so i can show you oh i barricaded this door too i barricaded as much as i could to make sure that this mass murderer would not get me so this is the campsite that's the bush i ran over yeah i did run over that Here's the electrical box. So, you know, the actual electrical outlet was covered and it's still dry as a consequence of being covered. But my cord was hanging outside like this and it had the green cord connected to it. Let me tell you what else happened last night. So this whole camping trip, I have refused to use the toilet because it is, uh oh, look at that. My back door was open. 
this whole time. I thought I, when I, you know what I'm realizing? The electrical locks don't lock the back door. I have to lock that separately. Man, if an axe murderer wanted to come in, all he had to do was open the freaking door. This is what's wrong with the scenario of being afraid, is that you do stupid stuff. Now, not only did I unplug my RV and try to barricade myself on the inside like a silly person and then leave the back door open, I had to use the bathroom because I was so afraid. I really had to pee. I had to pee twice. I was so afraid. And so I was like, well, I'm just, I have a toilet in my van. I know I've never used it. I know I don't know how to use it. I know if it, I don't even know if there's water in the system to flush it. Here's the toilet. Oh, it smells terrible in there. Yep. Two peas worth. This is why I didn't want to use the toilet. I wasn't sure if the system worked. And now I have literal stewage leaking out of the side of my van. That is how my night went. I was being afraid barricading myself inside of my camper with no power and live sewage. So the good news is that I made it. I am fine. I also texted my mother and my brother my exact location. I didn't want to scare them, but I was like, FYI, I'm at the San Luis Wilderness Valley area. So that's the whole story. I'm going to officially now reconnect myself to power in my last hour here at the campsite. <laughs>